so to be clear here, what you're proposing is that this car does not need a sound synthesizer of any sort because you can sit there and play stylophone <laughs> as I drive along. You pass this around to the passengers and you just go, oh, well, uh, can you do, um, just can't get enough by Depeche Mode? Have a go. Oh, I don't know, let's try it. Um, So, welcome to my eye pace. Now it's funny, isn't it? Because this doesn't wear its tech on its sleeve as much as an i3, where you've got your sort of exposed carbon fibre and you've got your the, the recycled material dashboard and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But it um, it is actually an aluminium electric car with dual motors, four wheel drive. Maybe uh, a 300 mile range. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, as a little point of reference, I came up to see you this morning and it's like 35 miles or something like that. And actually, on the range meter, it's et up, probably getting on to twice that That's at motorway speed. But the problem is, it's yeah. on the A1, it was really clear. And this is a brisk car. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is yeah. It's actually a quick car. 4.8 to 62. 4.8, and then they quote, because they're a British company still, they, they quote 4.5 to 60 as well. Well, I like It's good to have I a like nice 4 to 60 time. There'll be more of this when Brexit happens. <laughs> <laughs> the Brexit uh, model derivative. This is, well, this car's very un Brexity because it's made in Austria. It is. Made in yeah. Austria by Magna. Mag yeah. no. Steyr, Magna. Steyr. Who are also building the, uh, the E Pace. Yeah. So they've got a big and the G wagon. The G wagon, yeah. And what else did they build? There are. They did used to build the Fiat Panda four x four. Did they? Oh yes. Yeah, they did. Oh, no, yeah. hang on. Wasn't that Steyr Daimler Pooch? I'm sure they built the original. Maybe four x four Panda. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. They built what they do because I was I was over there but, um, earlier in the year, and they, they build. They specialise in lower volume specialist build cars, don't they? Yeah, yeah. The manufacturers can't front up the cost of well setting up a, a, a proper production line in. Two things have struck me about having spent some time with this. First of all, it feels pretty well made. Now, I know this is a pre-production car as well. Oh, is it? Yeah. Or at least, you know, early build. Do you know what? It looks fabulous. It's all quite well put together. And I sort of think that partly, I'm wondering if that is part of the Magna benefit, because yeah. Magna's business is building cars for the people. So they've got to build them well, and or they'll lose the contract. Yes, precisely. And so the extra attention to detail. Uh, yeah, it just feels like now there's some things that are just fundamentally sort of designed in not. The back doors feel a little bit clangy when you shut them. And I think it's partly because it's all alley. This car, isn't it? Yeah, ninety-four percent alloy. Ninety-four percent. So I'm told. Not not That's alloy. Ninety-four percent aluminium. Right. Yes, a lot. It's very aluminium-y then. It is and, very aluminium-y. And the, yeah, the back doors feel a bit clangy, and there's a few little build quality things, like this little, the wheel on the steering wheel that does the, the volume and then becomes a selector if you go into the menus. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not got enough resistance to it. It okay. feels a bit cheap. None of this looks cheap. But it doesn't look cheap. This is the no. best Jag interior for years, by a mile. Is this, um, this reminds me of the Range Rover Velar. It's the same stuff. It is the it? same, isn't it? Same stuff. Does I'll tell you something I've just noticed this morning that's lovely. It's beautiful. Climate control. Yeah. Um, so you've got smart climate. Okay. And it's detecting how many seats are occupied. Uh, I've seen this in the, the Kia Soul electric car. Mm -hmm. has a driver only button on the climate. So ah, if you're in, yeah. on your own in the car, you press driver only, and it's only blowing air at you or heat, yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. So you're not wasting. I mean, obviously, it's going into the rest of the car, but it's only blowing at you. It's a really clever yeah. use of yeah. just a little trick. But this, next step on, put it on smart. I had it on smart this morning. It was only blowing at me. Now you've yeah. got in the car. It knows you're here. Uh, I like that. Well, I was going to say, when I came up to see you this morning, on the A1, because it's a quick car, I was sort of like, oh, I keep just squeezing on a bit. And yeah. I'm suddenly doing a speed that's a high speed. Yeah. That, and we know electric cars, they're not so happy at that kind of thing. It no, does, it saps the it does. battery. Yeah. But then I did something which again is not, is, you're not meant to do, which I put the cruise on at a more sensible speed. And apparently yeah. putting the cruise on, well, you look at that, you see now the handling is good. Do you know, it feels nice and tall, the shell does. It, it does, doesn't it? It feels, yeah. very, it feels very tight. 
and tweet. Yeah. The steering's good in terms of its directness, and it's quite it's got a bit of weight to it. No, yeah. I mean there's no feel really, but what modern no, car but has balance, feel. Apart from I've only driven this a short distance, and I felt that the balance was excellent. And I felt I know it's quite a wide track car. It is quite wide, and it's a heavy car. Yeah, but you don't realise it's as heavy as it is. When we were putting the cameras in before we were chatting, we were talking about you stood back and went, "This is a base model." And, and Jag call it an SUV. But, yeah. But is it an SUV? Well, that's the thing. I it's don't not, want it? it to be an SUV. I think it's an SUV because, well, you said, is it is it to sell in America? Is that why it's an SUV? Because SUVs sell. Yeah. So I was quite I was quite pleased this is a base spec because it means it's on steel springs because I have had a quick go in one of these before. It was on air springs. Yeah. And the ride was pretty good, but I thought I wonder what it's like on the steel springs and yes. it's pretty good. It's really good. It's not as soft as I'd like, but it's sort of, it, yeah. it soaks things up. It feels sort of like a high quality ride. Yeah. It feels it's like one of those cars that rides well enough that you just don't really notice, but if you yeah. think about it, you go, oh, I it felt that. Firm. Yeah. It's firmer than I would expect, perhaps, from our, our traditional Jaguar. And this is running on what size rimage? I think this is on 20s. I think it's on 20s. Um, but it's acceptable. It's yeah. an acceptable ride. Old rolls. Oh, that's, that's just the other thing. I mean, if the road like that, like an old, an old spirit, that would be lovely. But I suppose the Jag wants to be a bit sporty, and when you chuck it into a corner, I tell you what is the steering's got that. It's, it's the right, the ratio is well judged because you can put the car where you want it. There's no sort of that kind of take up a bit of slack. Yeah. Um, and then as you come out of a corner, because you've got that instant torque, you can just absolutely that's great. floor it. It's four wheel drive. Yeah. It's motor at each end. Yeah. And and it just sort of the way they fires out of corners. They've, I know that this car um, hasn't been properly wheeled out to market yet, uh, and I have heard that um, they can't make enough of them. Their allocation for the, the number of cars they can make in the, the, the Steyr factory yeah. is um, is fulfilled, and, and, and they can't put out any more. And I think it's maybe becoming a victim of its own successes, car, kind of like and I hope it is. Yeah. Well, last year, someone from Jag told me that their product planning people had no idea how many they were going to sell. Yeah. They couldn't guess because usually they go, okay, we're going to do a new XF. And they'll look at the spreadsheet and they'll go, how many XFs have we sold over the years? Yeah. And we'll estimate it all from that. And they have to yeah. do that because they, you know, they've got to know how many dashboards to order and all that kind of thing. Exactly, market. exactly. And their, their production planning was all to cock. So went, there's no precedent for this. Yeah. No precedent at all. And we've got to do a you know, I guess they've got to do a contract with Magna and go, we would like this many a year. Well, no, it's oversubscribed already. Yeah. Which means that if you order one now, it, it's probably going to be a 10 month. Yeah, yeah. M but, maybe the, more. but the Jag person Which said happened to with me, the Evoque, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. When the Evoque first hit the. Hit but the they ground. make a lot more of those, don't they? Like, they, yeah. they make about 100,000 of those a year, something like something that. Something like that. But, yeah, this is a, this, but this, this is, is a, a low volume car. It, it is a low but, volume. But, yeah, this car. guy from Jag went, look, they just don't know. And they're frightened by that. It's like either it'll be a runaway hit, which yeah. seems like initially maybe it hasn't been, mm -hmm. or it'll be a total disaster, and they just don't know. Somewhere in between, so they've guessed, oh, we'll go low side, and um, no, you can't get one. But for if months. it's, but if it's again, it's the patience thing. If it's this good, if it's as good as we think, and it, and it genuinely does the range and the performance, and it can charge, because the other thing is, is Jag's rapid charging claims mm. and not able to be fully backed up in the real world yet because of the charges that don't really exist. Is it that it's the 100 kilowatts that it'll work best with and we don't mm. have any yet? Yeah. So that's a 50 at the moment. Yeah, whereas right? it, yeah, so if you bought a Tesla instead of this, mm. obviously you've got the supercharging network and every and that's a peace of mind for most people. Yeah, yeah. You just have the superchargers, yeah. whereas Jag don't have that. Yeah. So people are going, oh, so does that mean basically I'm just going to charge from home? Well, if you've got a drive, I mean, yeah. whose I've car one, isn't parked all night? If that's I mean, the yeah. minimum faff of having to go oink, and stick something into it when you get home, it's night, a bit. It's become habitual. It's just not aggro, is it? That's not aggro. I no. don't have a driver, that's why I sort of I find it less easy. But you know, yeah. we're talking about sort of sticking it on a rapid charger yeah. for a long journey. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about this. We had to go from London to near Manchester the other week, and it's near as damn it, 200 miles. Yeah. Door to door. Yeah. Now, in theory, this car could do it in one stride if it was full. And you're thinking if you're sort of 
Yeah, yeah, if you're clipping along on the motorway and you get on that M6 toll and you're doing M6 toll speeds, yeah. we know what those and are. And you forgot that you'd left the heating on 23. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I've opened all the windows <laughs> for some reason. And we've got a Thule roof box with a canoe <laughs> on top of it as well. And it grabs the anode. Always love doing that. So, your range is going down. But we were travelling with the whole of my family, so my wife and our kids, and we stopped at some services. Uh, we weren't in an electric car, but just because I was thinking about them, I thought, I wonder how long we're going to be here for. We were at the services for an hour. Did you just make a mental note of it? Yeah, so and then I was, became slightly obsessed with it, and now every time I stop at services or whatever, I was thinking, how long am I here for? And on the way back, again, we did stopped, you, did you and tell, we stopped did you for tell almost Jules an hour. You were, or did you just quietly? I just quietly. You see, this is in She's sick of my nonsense on that kind of thing. We have two plug it. I'm just throwing. You're just throwing money I must have thrown about thirty quid. Down, <laughs> sorry, say, sorry. There's nine grand under that seat now. Why have you carried all of your cash? I could buy a car. In coins. I bet I could buy a car with what's under that. No wonder the range is going down because of all the weight. It's you. <laughs> just carrying shrapnel. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got six canoes on the roof, and also <laughs> I have over fifteen thousand pounds in pound coins. I think the um, the real world test should be like you say roof bars, and it's usually someone with a double mattress and when you get above 50 miles it folds <laughs> back and you see it like that and you go I'm always wincing going that is going to come off that is how they create drag in a lab yeah the double it's mattress on the, on the roof on. of an old Mondeo and it's just on full lean it's leaning it's leaning it's leaning <laughs> and I'm, ne I'm thinking I'm not following that car that is a king size <laughs> mattress at some point it's going to do a full Mercedes at Le Mans. Oh, it will, won't it? Yeah, it was um, Peter Dunbrecht, was it? Yeah, and yeah. About, it happened to Mark Webber as well. That's right. God, that was a. I we watched know. that again a couple of years ago. It's hairy, isn't it's it? It's a full, full um, somersault, a back backflip, and lands back on wheels, doesn't it? Uh, well, it goes doesn't up it? into the trees. Uh, well, Webber that's just a does. minor detail. I mean, the thing is, in fairness, Webber did have a double mattress on the roof of his car. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was he's with an Aussie. A, he was staying with a mate. With a, yeah. With some tinnies. Yeah, staying with a mate in Shepherd's Bush and he just he, he brought Could the mattress with him. Could have a massive barbecue as well, made out of half an oil Yeah, drum. and also he drives in flip-flops, so yeah, he's his own worst enemy. I've been driving this for a couple of days. It's the first time I've got it out of London. Electric cars are good in London. They're in cities generally. Yeah. So it's sort of place their strengths, doesn't it? Absolutely. If you're sitting still in traffic, it's not really no. burning up anything. So the range is always good. Regen then, always. Yeah, regen, harvest. sort of stoppy-starty is always good. Yeah. But now getting out here, I've got to say, it's bloody great. Yeah. It, it, it's a very pleasant car to drive. And actually, it's odd how, you know, I said sort of coming up here on the motorway, it felt like the range was ticking down a lot. Yeah. Out here on open roads, where you think, because you've got a lot of sort of on the throttle, off the throttle, and the range is sort of holding firm. It's not bad at all. It's, you're doing a lot of coasting. Well, that's the thing. I suppose you are. There's a lot of, doing a lot of regen, but regen's never going to top up as much as you've used, is it? Otherwise, no. that would be perpetual motion, and then yeah, I don't know what would happen. We'd I've, become a black hole or something. I've I've been to the factory and seen the the battery pack, which is sort of the the whole belly pan of the car, being yeah. married to the rest of the chassis like that. Yeah, bolted it, and it's an ever such a neat. Design and it is a ground up EV. Yeah, it's bespoke, this is, isn't it? This, this, is, is, this is, yeah, this is I completely. Mean, I think there's going to be some Range Rover based on this, but fundamentally, this car is not a Range Rover chassis Don't. or an F pace or anything like that. It's bespoke, no. which is why the wheelbase is really long, which is in turn why the proportions are really interesting and I think really nice. Like, it's a nice, uh, it's slightly yeah. unusual. Once you see it, so you can see it out in the real world, you kind of go, that's a that's a handsome car, front three quarter, particularly. Yeah. I think it's, it's a great. nice it's, looking thing. It's unusual, but it's tastefully unusual. And the other thing is, is I like it because I don't think it's an SUV. Even though Jag are calling it an SUV, and maybe it is classed as an SUV, I don't care. Uh, massive regen into the 30 zone, look at that. God, it really, oh, that's impressive. Really, you can really almost nice. stand on its nose on the regen. So I think so much so the brake lights come on, don't they? Yeah. So they do in i3s as well. There's so much regen, the brake lights will kick in. Regen. In the US, all of these come on air springs because yeah. with the air springs they can make it stand taller so that it's then classed as an SUV, which I guess they want. Uh, because of ride height. Because of ride height. Yeah, so certain, I think it's, it might even be bumper and headlight height actually. So all of them, 
in the US are on the air spring so they can do that little cheat because they want it to be an SUV but you're right it doesn't feel or particularly look like an SUV I mean, no it doesn't drive like does it drive like an SUV no god no it's that, it's that uh, central gravity thing isn't it the central gravity low, thing yeah. down low and even though it is heavy uh, SUVs are heavy in fact find yeah. a light SUV yeah because most SUVs aren't aluminium most SUVs most SUVs are just frankly disappointing for me. I just, I, I don't quite understand the packaging. But it's not up, so we just came out of the village there where it's got. And then you just we're just of, sailing. It's just it sailing. does feel like you're just sailing. It's, it's that's the thing, and it's that that, that thing about uh, electric cars. They're very relaxing because they're quiet. Well, I got this. You know, it's got this sound thingy on it. A symposium, a symposium, or something. Yeah. And you can see it was set to dynamic, but I was driving slowly through the city, and I was like, "There's a sort of gravelly noise in the background. There's this fake engine thing." And um, yeah. And it's just like, no, I, I, I can see that they've done it because people who go, "Oh, one of the things I hate about electric cars is they is you don't hear it. You don't hear anything." Well, it's like I quite like that. Yeah. Adjust interior sound to enhance driving now, experience. Calm or dynamic? Well, so calm is basically I can't hear anything at all with this now. Slow it right down, and then. Oh, so it's. Can you it's, hear that? It's yes. got like a sort of fake sound on it. Yeah. So it still sounds kind of jet-like. Yeah, but I'm not interested. No, I don't. I don't want an SUV particularly. That we do have one. I know. I can't, but I do sort of want this, and I want. I want this partly because of its electricityness. Well, I do. But also, I honestly think it's probably the most. Convincing Jag since the F Type. You know, the F Type does its business as a sporty Jag. Oh, yeah. It's all yeah, noise yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. you go, yeah, I like that. It's and a good it's, type And it treads its own path. Well, Very it does much. a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's so. sort of, there's nothing quite like it. It's like a sort of better made TVR, really. And I kind of mean that as a compliment. But this, something different. Yeah. Because it's actually very relaxing, I've realised. It's very easy to go quite quickly in it, but it's totally relaxing. Um, and, and that, that's quite a jaggish sort of thing. It, it is because you've got the power there if you want it. You've got the swell of torque. But you mm. don't. You don't want to use it all the time. No. You pick your moments. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, that's that's super jag. Speak softly, can yeah, you stick? It's, imagine uh, this drivetrain when it if it slash when it arrives in like an XF Sport brake. See, well, that's the rumour that the next XJ is going to be sort of this, but yeah. lower, and that would make sense. Oh it? my goodness, would it make sense? And turn the wick up a little bit, and then the next JR just there. Because that's it, Jags, there's no greater luxury than just buckets of torque that you can absolutely smoke someone without breaking yeah. sweat. Yeah. And this has got it, because it's electric. And, and what you need to do, and this is not, it's not an easy task, all the people that that stroke their chins and, and say really when it comes to an electric car that they might use every day you want them to get in the driver's seat and just taste it for a bit yeah because you can't describe it as much as we try as much as you try and write about it in magazines reviews and stuff you've got to taste it for yourself you've yeah got to. yeah i and it's appealing it's just it's a it's a pleasant car to drive i like the way it looks not i don't like this spec because i'm not keen on the red i've decided and so also, I don't, I don't mind the red. It's not what the they wood. call the outside of this, like Corusco grey or something. It's basically in a lot of lights beige. It's like Maestro beige. It's, it's. It do you know what I'm gonna say? It it is, um, it's a bit Soviet on the outside. It is a bit, isn't it? It's, it's not flattering. There's a great blue they do, like a sort of racing yeah. blue. Yeah. I think really suits Almost like that BMW Estoril kind of blue. I yeah, think. yeah. I'm sure, it's, it's just got a lovely, it really pops. And uh, I like that on this. Yeah. And I do like the way it looks generally, and I like its unusual proportions. I mean, best of luck to them. Yeah. Because it's just, this is the, this it, is the new future now. It is, and if you're, I mean, I think the Audi e tron is going to look very kind of Q5 ish. Yeah. And, and the, maybe that's what people want. Yeah, and the murky EQC is very GLC. Yeah. It, in other words, it's, it's not shocking people. Visually, it just yeah. wants people to to make that transition really yeah. quickly and. But quite honestly, that I'm always convinced people mostly buy cars just because they like the way they look. Yeah. Like the bloke down my street who just he's had a Golf R for ages, one of the old R32. Yeah. And then one day he saw a poster for Jag F Pace of all things, and he just went, "Well, that's the nicest looking car I've seen for a while." And just and that's, well, in fact, he didn't because then he decided to have his kitchen extended. That's what car companies are up against a lot of the time. They don't realise it. Kitchen Kitchens. extensions. 
But that's the thing, he just saw a car on a poster and went, that looks nice, maybe I've finally found something that I'd consider replacing my Golf with. Yeah. So I think this, like anything, ultimately people go, oh, I like the look of that, or not. Yeah. But the other thing that they're up against, and they're all up against these new electric cars, is getting people to realise they don't drive as far as they think they do. Yeah, and they don't and stop. And you know this because you've had an electric car. Yeah, yeah, and it's true. It is just that behavioural shift that you have to be willing to be receptive of. Yeah. In the same way of being better at time management. Yeah. Or actually, in a way, use it as sort of a little bit of a, a, a therapeutic pause in your day. Yeah. Or in your week. Exactly. But also, even then, you do, it's just like, well, first of all, if you've got to drive, charge it overnight, that's what you're going to do. Yeah. You'll never use, need to use a public charging station. But people who go, oh, well, I mean, what, it's a 298 miles range, which, let's be honest, in the real world is 200 and a bit, maybe, I think. Yeah, uh, probably be 230, 240. So let's say, call it. For the sake of argument, if you've got heavy shoes on, it's 200 on the nose. You go, oh, 200 miles, I can't, I can't possibly live with a car that only does 200 miles on a go. It's like, ask yourself how many times you drive 200 miles in one stint. And the other thing is, if you had this as your, if you, if you were a, an everyday EV kind of family, you would enjoy your Defender and your 911 even more. Yeah. It really does feel like more of a reward. Yeah. When I get my V8 out at the weekend, I really, I go, oh, that's, that's great, because the juxtaposition is massive. Yeah. I feel like, I've, I do, it sounds wanky, but I do feel like I've earned it a bit more. Because <laughs> you go, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to start it up, it sits there and it, you smell it. Yeah, my yeah. kids go, oh, love that smell, Daddy. But my kids, and I would probably tire of it on a daily basis, plus I wouldn't be able to afford to do it on a daily basis. Well, as has been pointed out by wise men before, the internal combustion engine will end up being a hobby in the same way the horse has become a hobby. It the used to be our sole mode of transport, and yeah. now it's a hobbyist thing for weekends. Your V8 is it a little hobby a, for the weekends. It will be my horse. Just you and about, I don't know, 50 other people in the whole country who are roaring around in V8s for a day, yeah. every couple of weeks or every month, and not in the winter. The environmental impact of that is is almost immeasurably small. Well, I do fifteen hundred miles a year, Rich. Yeah. In, in, so in it's sort of we've kind so. of solved that problem. It's okay to have a V eight as a hobby car. And you're right. Like if I have my my Porsche as, and, and then we have this as a family car, it's you just feel yeah. Well, also is. yeah. And then, then the sort of the nice roar and cackle of a, of a proper internal combustion engine would be lovely. Yeah. What people forget is, oh, I've missed internal combustion, but, but electric cars have their own appeal. Yeah, that they instant, do, they do. The instant talk and the smoothness and the quietness, there's nothing more relaxing on an otherwise quite irritating yeah. stoppy start commute than just a car that, that drives the way that all electric cars do, and yeah. that's particularly because it feels very high quality. Oh, it, and, 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 and with like AMG levels of grunt. <laughs> So, for now, anyway, I think electric cars depreciate, so I wouldn't probably put cash money down even if I had 60-odd grand to lay out one of these. So the answer is to PCP or to lease it. Yeah. Lease it, but they're not cheap. No. Mind you, nor are Teslas. Do you think no, the equivalent no. of what, to get into a Tesla what, is uh, like sort of 10 grand down and then about 70, 800 quid a month? It's a Model S 75 that's the equivalent of this price. Yeah. Uh, and range. Uh, and that is a, well, Model S's don't, they start at mid-50s. Yeah. So it's kind of relative. It's kind of relative. It is. That's the thing, I sort of looked at this and went, oh, I hope it's affordable. And it sort of isn't, then you realise, because it's, you're getting a lot of stuff for your money. Yeah. In the same way, the Tesla, you know, Tesla is kind of almost an S-class rival, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Model you're, getting, S. you're getting an awful lot of tech. And I was thinking, oh, a, a while ago, I was like, we should get a Tesla as a family car. And I, and I looked at it and went, bloody hell, they're pricey. Yeah, but I was thinking people don't say that about them, and that's why with the Jag I Pace here, people go, "Oh, what? That's a sixty grand car. That's not real world." They go, "Well, hang on. No one's going to actually spend sixty grand at the showroom yeah. in one hit. Two, if you want to buy a comparable Tesla, mm. it's the same. It's, yeah. it's, it's mid fifties, late fifties starting price. So actually, it's not crackpot." On the, and also you get the familiarity of a car mm. a car manufacturer that knows how to put an interior together because they've been doing it for 70 years. So... Yes. You know? Yeah. I, I, I yeah. think Tesla are a fantastic company in many, 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 many ways. But I, personally, don't want to own a Tesla right now. Really? Yeah. I sort of still do, even though I think Elon Musk is a 
bit of a dick, but I, I do like his cars. You need to cars. step away from the Twitter. He needs to step away from the Twitter. Yeah. And in the same way. But that's the thing. See, a lot of people are drawn to Teslas because of him. Yeah. I'm slightly put off Teslas because of him. On a practical level, and why it's a great family car, I had the kids' seats in the back of this, and I put my kids in. And it's one of the few cars, the last one was actually a full-size Range Rover, where I haven't had to move the seats at all to get the kids' seats in, because you know how bulky oh, kids' seats are. Yeah, they are, they're ridiculous. And this, they're the modern problem. There's loads of room in the back of it, and it's not there actually is. that big a car. No, the trans tunnel is really shallow as well. Yeah. Well, I showed it to my wife, and I went, you know, I'd love one of these as our next family car. She went, well, it's not big enough, is it? Oh, uh, sorry. It is. It is. It's big enough. It's and that's what most people most people discount a lot of non SUVs because they look at the outside dimensions and think it's related to the internal dimensions. But this car has KN internal space, McCann outer dimensions. Is that right? Yeah. That's true. Right. So well, think about that. And I think it makes you look like less of a penis than either of those cars.